week 17. Let's fire away. Let's let Dan Kelly roll us into it. He says, I don't know how the Browns don't win by double digits. Short week. Jets can't get up for this game in Cleveland between the holidays. Let's roll. Cleveland Browns Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. These Jets six and nine, two and four on the road at the Browns ten and five, seven and one at home. We're in Brown Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, and the weather's great across the board here uh, again. So we've really not had to deal with very uh, you know inclement weather uh, this year uh, much. Uh, Forty four Fahrenheit, cloudy, three miles per hour. It's balmy and beautiful in Cleveland. Let's take a look at the line history here. We will start. With the side, we're going to be using pinnacles, openers, and closers. But pinnacle was very late uh, putting out action here. Are, so they, maybe, up? are they finally it, up? I'm not seeing any still. Let's see. Pinnacle, a very cautious, very cautious book. They claim that they don't kick out winners. Now they do limit them, but they're very, so very. That's the thing, and this, this is this to me is very telling too about what book, and this is why my database is all predicated on pinnacle, is because. Everyone, in my opinion, all these lines are waiting and they will move. As soon as Pinnacle starts opening the lines, you'll see a reaction from the broader market. I've actually noticed Bet Chris actually is kind of a, 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 a an originator of line movement in, in some cases. But Bet Chris, Bookmaker, together, they're great books. They're very sharp books. Uh, but let's use let's use Bet Online. Now, Bet Online is going to make this a little trickier and probably take us a little bit longer uh, because Bet Online opened up, you know, last Tuesday. They open up last Tuesday for these games. So they, they, you know, they're always, you know, 12 days in advance. So we'll talk about what it was on Tuesday, but then we'll go to what it moved on Sunday night. So we'll talk about the two different things. Maybe that's going to be more helpful for us in the long run. Also, don't forget, we have our bet online poker tournament this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, our holiday poker tournament, $50 buy-in tournament. Uh, please join us here uh, with our friends at bet online if you don't have an account at bet online if you open up a new account uh, they will match you if you go through our website 100 percent up to a thousand dollar bonus so this opened up with these jets plus five and a half and then on sunday night it moved to seven moved to seven at minus 110 it's now seven at minus 115 it got up to seven at minus 122 around midnight so we have had you know in the last 20 hours uh Actually, in fact, this moved to seven and a half. I didn't even, sorry, I missed that. This moved to seven and a half this morning. So this was seven and a half only for 10 minutes, but it did move to seven and a half, but now it's seven. So we've had a point and a half move towards uh, these New York Jets. From a total scenario here, we're dealing with a 36. It opened up at 35. It dropped down to 34 and a half. This was before the game started. Then on Sunday night, they moved it up to 36. They moved it to 36, which is where it is right now. It was at 35 and a half earlier today, but still we've had to move to the over. So a slight move to the over and a legit move towards the Browns. 64% of the tickets are on the Browns and 52% of the cash. Then you have 57% of the tickets and 90% of cash. I don't want to interrupt, but did you say that the move was towards the Browns? I think... I think you said at first the move was from seven and a half to seven at Bet Online. Wait, did I miss well, it that? De- it de- will depend on how you want to look at this and depend how you want to judge this. So this opened up at five and a half, oh, and then it moved right. to seven on Sunday. So that was the point and a half move towards the Browns. And then at this point, it's moved five cents towards the Browns yep, since it you. opened on Sunday yep. night, since it kind of reopened, I could say, on Sunday night. So we have a five cent move since Sunday towards the Browns. We have a point and a half move since it opened 12 days ago towards the Browns. And let's take a look at the cash flow then here for this one. From a cash flow perspective, we have 57% of tickets and 90% of cash on the under. We don't see that moving in the marketplace. It's already a very low total. And then, as I said, it looks like some sharper bets are on the Jets, 36% of tickets and 48% of the cash. That's where we stand right now. Let's take a look at the X's and O's here. Jets coming off their second win in three games, 30-28 at home over the Commanders. They blew a 20-point third quarter lead, needed a 54-yarder from Greg Zerline with five seconds left to get the victory. Zerline's been money in the bank. He's been automatic. 30 of 31 so far this year. Very impressive. They outgained the Commanders 381 to 245, which is another sign. I know that you know the ownership is vouched for the coach and general manager, but Salah, just another example I felt in that football game of of not, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Dreamboat Ron is a better coach, but when you outgain someone 381 to 245, you should be able to take care of business. 
Simeon was better than I expected, and they threw more than I expected. 27 to 49 for 217 yards, touchdown and a pick. He also ran four times for 18 yards and lost a fumble. Uh, Brees Hall ran 20 times for 95 yards and two touchdowns, caught 12 for 96. We haven't seen Brees Hall erupt like that often this year. Garrett Wilson caught nine for 76. They were just four of 16 on third down. We've been talking about how pitiful they've been in third down all year. They're last in the league, converting 25.4% of third downs. As usual, they struggled in the red zone, and we've seen that all year. You know, uh, they went two of five. This is the worst red zone offense in the league. The pass rush inexplicably couldn't get pressure on Sam Howell, despite the weakness of the commander's offensive line. Jets finished one sack and four quarterback hits. They are far and away, uh, or I already touched on far and away, the worst red zone team in the league. Uh, the defense let the commanders go four, four in the red zone. That's not an issue with the Jets. They're, they've been great in the red zone all year. I think we can put a line through it. It's an anomaly. It's outlier. Uh, you know, they held the commanders to three to 12 on third down. They're not that good on third down defense, but they're a great red zone defense. Brown's coming off a 36, 22 victory at Houston. They will clinch a playoff berth with the victory. That is the biggest psychological angle on this game. And this is why Dan Kelly saying, why don't the Browns win by double digits? The Browns have a chance for their second postseason appearance since 2002. I mean, that this is a huge carrot dangling in front of these Cleveland Browns. Uh, the Browns outgained the Texans 418 to 250. Joe Flacco, 27 to 42 for 368 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, has thrown 10 touchdowns, but 10 touchdowns in four games and seven interceptions. I mean, he's just yeah. letting it all hang out. You can tell this guy is getting the last starts of his life because he's leaving it all out on the field. Amari Cooper caught 11 for a franchise record, 265 yards and two touchdowns. It was also the most receiving yards uh, in the in, in any NFL game this year by anybody was what Cooper. He has 1,250 yards. That's the first receiver in team history with consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. The running game did very little. We're getting used to that. Jerome Ford, Pierre Strong, Junior Cream Hunt combined for 27 carries for 58 yards. They were 6 of 16 on third down. They're 29th in the league, converting 31.5% of third downs. Uh, Flacco has thrown for over 300 yards in three straight games. But, and this is important, during this stretch, the Browns have been worse on third down than they were before. They're converting just 28% of third downs with Flacco. I believe that's fourth worst in the NFL over that time period. I thought I wrote it down. Uh, they were four of six in the red zone. They're 15th in the league, scoring touchdowns, 55.6% of red drives. They're 60% with Flacco. So he's better there, but he's not cashing the third downs. The pass rush finished with three sacks, six quarterback hits, held the Texans to five of 15 on third down. As Troy's talked about all year, this is the best third down defense in the league, allowing opponents to uh, convert 28.7% of third downs. And at home... At home, which is where they are here, they're even stingier. At home, this third down defense is absolutely spectacular. Uh, they allow conversions just 23.2% of third down opportunities. The Texans went two for two in the red zone. I don't understand how a team can be so good, uh, so good on third down, so good overall defensively, and so bad in the red zone. They're third worst in the red zone. They allow opponents to score touchdowns on 70.3% of third down opportunities. And over the last three games, the Cleveland Browns are the worst red zone defense in the entire NFL. They have not stopped one red zone drive in three games. Can you believe that? Opponents are cashing 100% of red zone drives in the Joe Flacco Browns era. That's what they're doing, which is unbelievable. Which you would think then, maybe this total is too low, even though we see big bets on the under. Uh, Coromo and Harmon each had interceptions. To add another layer of difficulty... Dustin Hopkins hurt his hamstring while trying to chase down Damian Pierce's 98 yard kickoff return. He's out. He was out for the remainder of the game. They also lose their punter, Corey Barocas, to injury as well. So Hopkins is out. So they went for it on fourth downs. They attempted three two point conversions. It didn't hurt them here in this game, but will it hurt them this week? Martin Emerson Jr. injured his shin in the third quarter. He's expected to be good to go, but his team has so many injuries. This offensive line is so banged up. Ethan Pochich guards Wyatt Teller and Joel Batonio. Offensive tackle Gron Christian are all questionable. Jedrick Wills, Dewan Jones, Jack Conklin already out for the season with injuries. There's a ton going on in this football game. This is not uh, as simple as it looks at first. There's so many layers to it. Take it away, Troy. Our Thursday nighter, the Browns with the opportunity to clinch a playoff berth against the Jets. Yeah, I think everybody knows where I'm going with this game at this point. With this, with this team, this Browns team, I feel like you know, one of my biggest pre-flop bets or, or future bets was on this Browns team to win the division. I feel like I was on, you know, I was ahead of the market. I definitely feel like I was there, but 
obviously with all these injuries, they just couldn't get there. I mean, they're having a great season. And I think to your point, I think you're right. I think this total might be a little bit too low. The Browns are dropping back the pass way higher than they're expected to be. And this is, this is consistent, right? This is not just a blip on the radar. They're dropping back and throw it. Um, and luckily in this spot, we get the Jets off a win. I think the Jets were lucky. J- Jacoby Brissett didn't start that game. He led the commanders to three consecutive touchdowns against this Jets badass defense, which just blows my mind. This Jets team, I just, I just can't get over it now. Uh, after watching them, I backed them a few, many times this season. I actually had a max play on them against the Broncos weeks ago. So I've watched this team ad nauseum, ad nauseum at this point because Robert Sala, and I know, I know my boy Jose Bouquet is listening in the background right now. He likes Robert Sala. Well, he dropped Simeon back 50 times, dropped him back 50 times. This team was up over 20 points against the commanders and he continued to drop him back. Uh, this guy had a, Simeon had a 28 PFF grade with an eight out of 3.6. You know, I know he met a lot of people's expectations. I haven't gone back and watched that film. I didn't watch that game live either. And with Christmas and everything, usually I have watched all these games that I'm talking about. I haven't watched this one back yet, but I guarantee you he's missing reads. And here's the problem with this whole team is that this this offensive line is is, is just terrible for the Jets. Uh, They grade out worse than the NFL. They look every bit as bad as the New York Giants. Both New York teams, just their offensive lines are just pitiful. But what's the explanation behind dropping Simeon back 50 freaking times? I can't explain it. And to me, the only logical explanation is that they're trying to lose the game, that they're trying to tank 50 times with this crappy. It's just unbelievable. I just can't see a scenario. It's well, I could see a scenario. It's the NFL. Shit happens all the time. But it's just hard to build a case for the Jets to win this game. All the Browns have to do is limit turnovers. One turnover. I'll give him one. I'll give him a leash because I can't expect zero from this Brown team. I know to have a leash of at least one, right? Limit turnovers, pressure the QB. This offensive line is terrible. Dan Kelly talked about it in the chat. We got revenge from a year ago for the Brown, not only for the Browns, but for Flacco against his old team. This Browns team has everything to play for. You talked about it, Jimmy. They're trying to make the dangle the carrot of the playoffs out in front of them. They haven't been, they did. This is not a franchise that goes to the playoffs. And this is at home where the Browns have been great. And I'd love to be sharp in a spot like this. Actually, when I first seen this line, I originally leaned towards the Jets. But I have no reason to be scared of the sharp action in this game. Home favorites between 7 and 8 with 60% of spread bets are 12 and 1 straight up. 6 and 6 ATS. But the more public the play is, the more they cash. The more public the play is, the more they cash against the spread. And if you narrow it down to after week 10, 5 and 0 straight up, 4 and 1 ATS. Since 2018, home favorites between 7 and 8 after week 10 against the opponent off a win. 12 and 6 ATS, 15 and 3 on a teaser. This Browns team is going to be my anchor for a lot of bets this week on the money line or on teasers. I already bet the Browns Rams teaser, got the Browns down to minus one, the Rams down to minus a half a point. And I put two units on that, and I did bet the I did sprinkle the Browns on the minus seven line as well. Are you making both of those official here? Is there enough of a unit on it to? Oh yeah, yeah. As long as it, anything over you, you know, I put two point two five units on some plays that are like you know plus four hundred, plus three, you know, big big payoffs. Pay on pay point two five to win one unit. Those are the ones that we talked about after I think it was week four where they, we weren't counting anything. We were counting everything that I posted at first, and we changed that, and I'm glad we did. Well, at least this past week, it helped me save two units. But, um, yeah, 0.25 units. When I post a play on 0.25 units, it hasn't been logged as official for this show. Well, and, I, and the reason why is, like, when, when I put 0.5 units on something, I'm usually expecting to add more to that position throughout the week. No, I feel you. I, I I like the way you've handled the, everything. I, I I watch it very closely. I like it. Uh, I I like the over here. I I don't. I also see a situation where the Browns put up a ton of offense late in the game. Their offensive line is just being destroyed with injuries. I don't think it's easy for Flacco out there, and he's leaving it all on the field. I t- seven interceptions in the last four games. I'm very interested in the over and the sharp money's on the under, uh, but uh, I, I, I've so so I agree with you 100. percent All this money's on the under, and and I know that this is a favorable spot for the over. Some of the rare rare favorable spots for the over. 
but it's such a low total that you don't you don't have a big sample in this in this type of market. So I you know we have a two and zero spot to the over, not a big sample, but at the same time, watch this Browns team play. This is an over type of team. They turn the ball over, which creates points for the other team, and they they pass the ball very frequently. They are successful in the red zone under Flacco. I think the overs are a really really sharp look. I do. And I like Flacco being in this situation because he can be a calming influence, even if they get down. But I do think that there's a lot of pressure on the Browns. And I agree with Dan. It's going to be bonkers on Thursday night on the shore. Like, it's just going to be mayhem. I mean, I can't imagine how loud the stadium is going to be. So I guess I I do have some interest in the the Browns. Excuse me. I still have some interest in the Browns. As a seven is a lot. I, I almost want to see if I can get in live. And I also think that if there's not a lot of scoring early, that's not going to scare me to move on this live as well. I expect to move on the over uh, this evening. It's up to 36 and a half now at 365. We have big bets that have come in on the under, but I just, you know, the third down success and the red zone success, it, gives you clear ideas of how things are going to go. And, and and that's why, you know, that Titans Seahawks game was so according to, I mean, and we have such a sample size of, of information now to deal with that. that I, I could have told you what the final score was going to be in the Seattle Carolina game. I was just hoping that it was going to flip. And, and that was still with the high scoring fourth quarter. I think this gets over. We have our guy, Troy Browns minus one and the Rams minus a half. And he's also, and that's moved. just the beginning of it. That's just the beginning of it. I'm going to be at it. This is going to be my anchor. Uh, the Browns are going to win this football game. I just, you know, uh, despite some, and there's always circumstances where they're not going to win the fo- football. There's things that could happen. Look at the Chiefs game, right? So things could happen, but I'm very confident that the, the Browns win this game. And I'm curious to see who they sign to kick. Oh, Dan Kelly called it out. They, they signed the backup or maybe a practice oh. squad kicker from the Lions. Okay. So they Important. definitely had, they have definitely signed somebody at this point. Yeah, they were. They've been doing tryouts for forty eight hours. So, but did you see? There's three. I think three occasions where the the starting kicker has gotten, or the, I think I'm talking kickers, not punters. The starting kickers have gotten injured. It was the Texans, the Browns, and I forget the other game, but all three of them they ended out netting out way better than they would have if they had their kicker. It's just food for thought. I don't know. Just, yeah, just no, it's it worked out for the Browns fine, but still. I know. You know if, yeah. if it was a tighter spread, you'd be more concerned. You know, with, yeah. with a bigger spread, you know that you can run. All right, we are locked in here for the Thursday night. We got to speed up the the pace. We have fifteen more games to cap. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys all for joining us. It's great. I hope you all had a wonderful holidays. It's great to be back in action with you guys. Got a big last few days here of twenty twenty three. So let's go get that cash. And Dan Cut says, Riley Patterson missed two extra points for Detroit a couple weeks ago and was cut. Harold Williams says, Patterson sucks. Detroit didn't trust them to uh, to kick. Oh, sorry. Didn't trust them to kick over 48 yards. Well, well luckily, the Browns only going to need 10 points to cover this spread. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know. Oh, the over then won't hit, but uh, I, I do think that I, I'm very interested. It's going to be a really fun football game, and, and Cleveland deserves this opportunity to get into the playoffs after everything they've been through this year. Thank you guys for joining us. Let's move on.